Spiritual Minefield. Today we're going to be talking about the endurance of the saints. This study is going to be an encouragement for all believers in Jesus Christ who really have the Holy Spirit and are walking in the ways of the Lord. I hope that this message encourages you, pushes you in the right direction, and gives you the encouragement that you need to seek the Lord, to cling to Him and continue in His Word, obeying the Word of God, praying to Him, and living a life that pleases Him alone. And also, when the Holy Spirit directs you and tells you what He wants you to do for the Lord, that you may obey and do what the Holy Spirit it has put in your heart to do according to the Word of God. All right, so let's start here. We're going to do Daniel chapter 12, and we're going to start in verse 10. And by the way, Daniel 12 is right here. The whole chapter is about the end times, but uh, there's something that is said here that applies to every true born-again believer, which is encouraging. And this is what it says, verse 10. Many will be purified. And here the many is known by the by the synonyms that are describing the many okay so the many here is in reference to believers in jesus christ so all right so let's read many will be purified made spotless and refined but the wicked will continue to act wickedly none of the wicked will understand but only the wise will understand so christians when you are a believer in jesus christ there's only one direction you're going to head to you're going to head in the right direction. You're going to become more mature. Some believers become mature a little bit quicker than others. It depends on your obedience, on your willingness to obey God. But nonetheless, we're going to move forward. We're going to move in the direction of Jesus Christ. So it says here, many will be purified. Purified means that whatever God doesn't like in your life, he's going to start taking it out. He's going to start refining you to be more uh, in his image to look more like him, like Jesus Christ. Made spotless. Spotless is to have not, no defect. Basically, you're becoming more holy, more like Jesus Christ, because Christ is completely holy. God says in the Old Testament, be holy for I am holy. And that's what you see here. And then also refine. Refine is you throw a gold. When you get gold from a rock, it's not shiny. It's not beautiful. But when you refine it, let's say you throw it into the fire, it melts. And then anything that's like like a dark color, black or anything like that, that's in perfection, it floats up and then it's taken out. And then you uh, make the gold, you, you make it cold again or it starts to get hardened when you take it out of the heat. And then what happens is it looks very shiny. And that's what the Lord is going to do when... When he makes us, when he starts purifying us so that we could be spotless and refine us, basically he is molding us. He is shaping us to be more like his son, Jesus Christ. And But look what it says about the wicked. But the wicked will continue to act wickedly. Basically, the wicked will continue to go, you know, in a downward spiral. The wicked will not get up and go in the right direction. The wicked will continue to go in the opposite direction, deeper, deeper in that opposite direction. While the Christian goes in the right direction, much more closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. So both the wicked and the righteous do this. Jesus is here and the devil is here. And the wicked goes closer to the devil while the righteous go closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what's happening here. So we have the encouragement that Jesus will work in each believer to make you, to purify you, make you more spotless, and to refine you so that you may be pleasing in his sight. Okay, now let's go to John chapter 15. And in John chapter 15, look what he says here in verse 2. So we're going to read 2 and then we'll skip. It says this, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. So the one that doesn't bear fruit is a person who claims to be a believer, but there's no evidence that his life has been changed. There's no evidence of the Holy Spirit inside of him. Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit inside of him is the one that produces a fruit. So if you have no fruit, he comes up, meaning he takes you out. You're claiming to be a Christian, but he makes it known that you really are not. And I'm going to show you this very clearly. Uh, very clearly. Let's go to um, Philippians. 2.13, and look what it says. 
It says, for it is God who works in you to will and to act on behalf of his good purpose. So it is God inside of you in the person of the Holy Spirit to will and act, meaning that it is the Holy Spirit who's going to motivate you, encourage you, empower you to produce fruit. But it is him who is producing the fruit through you. So he is using you as a vessel to accomplish God's will. So if you have if you have fruits, that means that the Holy Spirit is evidence that the Holy Spirit is inside of you. If you have no fruit, that's evidence that the Holy Spirit is not inside of you. And that's what John 15 here is saying. Verse two, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Why? Because there is no Holy Spirit there. The person hasn't been converted truly. But then look what it, all right, so it continues and look what it says. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes to make it even more fruitful. You see there, this connects with Daniel chapter 12, where it says in Daniel chapter 12, uh, many will be purified, made spotless and refined. Same concept here in John 15, where it says in the second half, of the verse and every branch that does bear fruit, meaning that shows evidence that he is born again and has the Holy Spirit. What is he going to do? He's going to prune what he prunes. What what does the meaning of prune? Well, if you go, if you're gardening and let's say you have a beautiful sunflower and the sunflower has dead leaves or let's say it has a creature on it. What do you do? You prune it. You cut off the dead leaf and you clean it from every bug and stuff like that so what happens is when you clean the plant very good then it starts maturing even better it grows thicker and it flourishes much more nicer because you're pruning it you're cleaning the the plant from every bad thing that's on it you start cleaning it and that's what the lord does he purifies us same concept here with the word prunes he purifies he cleanses why because when he does that you'll become better you'll become more like him Okay, now, and for the purposes to make even more fruitful, basically to be more fruitful is to be used more by the Lord to accomplish his will, meaning you're going to have a harvest so that when you go to heaven, he's going to reward you for what you did for him, even though it was the Holy Spirit inside of you that was working through you, but yet Jesus will still reward you. How awesome is that? There is really God working inside of you and he still re will reward you as if you did it yourself, but it was God inside of you giving you the will and, and and the motivation to actually accomplish his will okay now let's go to verse i think it's 16 yes so 16 very powerful verse if you guys have a chance in your bible and you have a highlighter i recommend you highlight verse 16 it says you did not choose me but i chose you see so it is not that we chose christ he comes to us first draws us near to himself opens up our hearts and then when we accept what he's offering when we when we um respond to the conviction of the holy spirit that's when he gives us saving faith so that we may believe in him as lord and savior because faith is a gift according to ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 okay so you did not choose me but i chose you and then and then look what it says and i i pointed you i appointed you to go and bear fruit meaning you are appointed meaning that you will bear fruit. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you will bear fruit. Why? Because the power of the Almighty God, Jesus Christ himself, through the person of the Holy Spirit, is living inside of you, and he is power. Power, this is unimaginable, living inside of you. You are the new temple of the Holy Spirit, and he's living inside of you to empower you to accomplish his will. So it says here, I have... And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will remain. Basically, a true believer cannot apostatize and lose all the fruits because fruits will remain. Your works, what you did for the Lord, will remain so you'll be rewarded for what you did for the Lord. So then here it tells you that you have been appointed by the Lord to bear fruit, meaning to show your genuineness of your faith that you truly are converted. And not only that, that whatever you do for the Lord will remain. Well, what does that mean when it says fruit that will remain? Means that your fruit will be credited to you, will be credited to you in judgment day. When you meet the Lord, he's going to show, he's going to credit you all the good works you did will be credited to your account. So that when you go to heaven, the Lord will reward you according to your works. Okay, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This is my command to you, love one another. So this is very important. 
God is love, and the way you show that God is inside of you is you love your brothers in Christ. Not only your brothers, but your enemies as well. Okay, now it says here, when you bear fruit and you are a genuine believer, because the evidence is shown that you're bearing fruit, you're doing God's will, look what it says, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. That means that when you're in God's will and you do it according to what he wants you to do, you know for certain that when you pray, it will be answered. Now, it might not be an immediate answer. For instance, he's, he's not going to say, um, he's not going to give it to you now. He's going to give it to you according to the perfect timing that you need, whatever you're asking for. Remember, God is perfect. He's never too early or too late. He's always on time. And even though you're asking him something and he doesn't give it to you right away, that means it's because it's not the right time. But just know that if you are, uh, bearing fruit, meaning if you're a genuine believer and you're walking in the ways of the Lord, he promises this so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. So if you're bearing fruit, that means you're right with the Lord and you're walking according to his will so that whatever you ask him in prayer, he will give it to you because he delights in you. So this is an encouragement uh, verse that you should um, highlight if you do get a chance verse 16 now let's look at philippians 1 6 philippians 1 6 look what it promises it says being confident of this that he referring to the lord who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of christ jesus look at that encouragement meaning if the moment you got saved Christ started to work inside of you. He started to work in your heart through through the Holy Spirit. He's working to make you more Christ-like, to make you more like the Lord. So what does it mean? He says he's going to carry it on to completion, meaning you will be completed until the day of Christ Jesus. So basically, God will continue to work in you to be more holy. So this is a promise. The Lord will never abandon you. He will not discard you if you mess up. What he's going to do is he's going to discipline you, get you back in good standing after you repent, and then he will continue to work on you. The Lord will work on you until you breathe your last. He will never give up on you. He will constantly work on you until you reach where he wants you to be. Thank you for listening.